a topology is the mm-hmm. best way to define it. I like that. John might want to talk more about that. I, I, so I want to, sp- I want to pose a question that no one's been able to really answer to satisfaction for me. Uh, what is a proton versus a hydrogen? Okay. Righty ho. It's a proton versus a hydrogen. Right. Okay. Well, the thing is, first first thing is, what is a proton? And if you think that the electron is made of a, a kind of electromass magnetic radiation, then you don't we're not obviously not going to think the proton's made of green cheese. It's also the same sort of thing. But what is it? It's far more massive than the electron. It's eighteen hundred times more massive. It's a much more solid object. But to answer what's happening in the hydrogen atom first, I want to talk about muons and taons. Now, the muon is very similar to the electron, and the taon is very similar to the electron, except for the fact that the muon is about 200 times more massive than the uh, than the uh, electron, and the taon is about 3,000 times more massive. So how does that come about? Well, in, 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 in the theory, the way it happens is that you have an electron, which is really something which is going round and round in circles twice. It's like a it's like it's a double loop, but it goes, if you imagine that as being something which is going up and then coming down, it's looping around and around. Okay, I'm really doing that four, to, four times, but I'm just going to take two of these. And take that as being one unit, one unit of, 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 of material. But it's really a rotation. So what I can do is I can take that rotation and I can turn it around and I can rotate the rotation and make it do the same thing. I can make that double loop itself go around a double loop. And if I do that, what I'll find is I'll find that instead of having things going up, for everything going up and going down, I'll have another one which is going up and down again. So I'll have four such objects. And if you take that into 3D, that'll be happening in X and in Y and in Z or in three three separate dimensions. If you take those four objects and have a look at how effective they are in trapping light, in, in interacting, in, in other words, uh, by shadowing light, then the number of possibilities you have for matching with a photon going in each d- dimension are not four, because you have you have six. You have six combinations of two out of four. You have this pair, this pair, this pair, this pair, this pair, and the outside pair. So you have six such combinations. And that means that one should expect a particle at about six cubed times the mass of the electron that was a rotation of a rotation, extra rotation within those rotations. And indeed, the muon mass is very close to that, 216 times the mass of the electron. Then if one goes to six of these, we do the same trick again, then one finds there are 15 combinations of two out of six, and 15 cubed is approximately the mass of the tau on. Now, what I think a proton is, is a proton is the same kind of stuff going around loops, but the loops are not what a quark is, what the quark, where the quark symmetry comes from, in my view. And it's a real symmetry, it's a proper symmetry. One sees families of particles that are, without any doubt, formed of, uh, of, of, of either three systems of the same sort or a sort anti-sort system, which are QQ bar mesons or QQQ hadrons. What I think is happening with those is that one has... A photon which is going round with the same kind of way that an electron goes round, but it isn't making a complete loop where it bites its own tail. That's true for the electron, the muon, and the tauon, but not true for the elements of the proton which we call quarks. Now, what I think of quark is it's something which has some motion which goes round and round like an electron. It's like an electron. But what it does, it goes comes in, and it doesn't quite make the full 720 degrees. It comes out again at right angles. Mm. So it transforms X to Y, or Y to Z, or Z Mm. to X, or X to minus Z, or whatever. But it changes things through 90 degrees. Now, if one postulates such a thing, that's not a particle, because it's not something which is self-recreating, coming back to what we were talking about before. But one can make a self-recreating object by doing the following. You can have something that goes in, does something complicated here, comes out at right angles, and then stick it into an exactly equal but opposite thing that does something complicated and goes back in. But one of them goes around the loop left-handed, and the other one goes around the loop right-handed. So it goes around a figure of eight, left, right, left, right. If one associates a left-handed loop with a quark and a right-handed loop with an anti-quark, then 
one could say you could take a quark and an anti-quark and make a particle that's actually a self-recreating particle. And the lightest such thing would look very like a muon because you have the same number of crossings. You have a loop and then you have a loop on top of it, which is sitting in the same space because the thing follows this quantum bicycle motion. So it should have approximately the same mass as the muon, which, of course, the, the um, pi meson does. So you have an object there which is more complex, but is a quark and an anti-quark. If you take the quark to be the symmetry that just transforms x to y, for example, then y back to x, and then x to y, and y back to x, no problem. But imagine you wanted to make a particle that didn't have left-handed and right-handed loops, but only had right-handed loops. Then you very quickly realize that you can't make such an object with two quarks, because you can go x to y, and then y to z, but z isn't x. So, um, so if you, if you, you, you can go back to mine, you, you just can't make a full, a full circuit. But what you can do is you can go X to Y, Y to Z, Z to X. That is a full circuit. And that full circuit is what I think the proton is. Mm. It's three quarks and it's three quarks, it's three quarks. It's three Topologies that are very nearly electron topologies superimpose one on, on one another, like the tau on. Now, the proton is quite a lot lighter than the tau on, about half the mass of the tau on. And the reason for that is that as it, as it, wherever it makes a contact, that contact is so, so it's coming out of one thing going into another thing. That part of the flow is common. So it's a reduced, slightly reduced um, flow. Hmm. <clears throat> and hence is less massive. Hmm. So that's what I think the proton is. Now, if you want to make a hydrogen atom from a proton, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of these objects, which is, you see, if you, if you do this, if you go around like that, what you're doing is you're going, I'm going right, 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 right. I'm doing a three-quarter turn. But three rights make a left. If you go right three times, it's the same as going left. So you end up with an object that has the same direction of flow of the electron. And the direction of flow comes from the mass term. So it has the same stuff as the electron, but it has far, far higher mass. But it has the same charge because it's also an interactor. The charge comes from equilibration and interactions. So... What happens when a proton, so a proton and electron, they are naturally made for each other. One of them's positively charged, the other one's negatively charged. Warmth, clock, hydrogen atom. But what does that hydrogen atom look like? Well, that hydrogen atom looks like a resonant harmonic interaction between an electron and a proton. Now, the proton's 10 to the minus 15 meters Compton wavelength, the electron about 10 to the minus 13 meters. But the hydrogen atom is 10 to the minus 10 meters. What happens is, Take an electron, it's quite small, give it a proton, proton takes the electron and the electron takes the proton, and they both blow up to have the same Compton wavelength of about 10 to the minus 10 meters. So this tiny electron, which we think of as being a small particle, put into a hydrogen atom is blown up by three orders of magnitude. The reason it's doing that is because a lot of its interaction is proton to electron. This thing isn't a proton and an electron, it's a proto-electron. The flow is a continuous flow through the whole system, through both the electron and the proton. So, so I think the formation of a hydrogen atom is the formation of a new kind of particle, a hydrogen atom. Okay. I think mm. forms a hydrogen mm. molecule. What happens there is you have a figure of eight flow between the hydrogen in the way that Arnie's talking about and beginning to develop in terms of in terms of covalent bonding models for these systems. Mm. So what, what I'm hearing you say is that the substance isn't changing, just the motion of the substance is changing, something like that. That's right. It's just the topology of the path that's changing. And I like what that. one's doing is one now has two topologies sitting there. One has a topology which is a set of three curls, that's the um, proton, and, and a single curl, that's the electron. And the two of them fit together in such a way as to reduce the total energy. But in reducing the total energy, by smaller energy, Small is large, and large is small. Smaller energy, much smaller energy, and so both of the systems blow up, both the electron and the proton blow up. So what I'm looking at is, people tend to draw this as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a proton being a point, and then an electron cloud around it. That's wrong. 
because the proton gains a Compton wavelength too, which is the same as the Compton wavelength of the electron because of momentum conservation. So they both have the same Compton wavelength. They both blow up. You end up with an electroproton, which is a cloud of proton containing a cloud of electron, where the two things are fitted together as well as they can, apparently by a factor of about a thousand, to reduce the interaction with the rest of the universe for them, for everything, a thousand times weaker. Okay, so let me bigger. let me clarify this for a second. So are you implying that the old school model of the the proton as as something that sits at the center of the atom is incorrect? Yes, and I think it's just bad thinking because I think in ordinary quantum mechanics it's quite clear that's the case as well. 